Hello everybody, let's talk about how electricity is provided to your homes. Your house is grounded by an earth rod, an electric cable is connected to a cabinet. From there, wires are distributed to all the sockets and lamps in your house. The cable consists of five wires. Instead of a cable, you might be connected by an overhead line. There are three phase wires, phase R, S and T, a neutral and an earth wire. Still today, the bulk of electric power is generated by rotating generators. The generator is driven by a turbine, it could be a water or a steam turbine. The generator consists of a magnetic rotor. If a metal coil is mounted close enough to the rotating magnet, a voltage will be induced in the coil. Here, I measure the voltage in, induced in the coil by means of an oscilloscope. To do so, I connect both ends of the coil to the measurement device. The blue wire is grounded. In order to better utilize the generator, three coils are mounted around the rotor, displaced by an angle of 120 degrees from each other. If I measure the induced voltage of the three coils, I see that the three voltage curves are also displaced by 120 degrees from each other. The three phases we have seen at your home are connected to the three phases of the generator. However, the voltage level is different. In some regions, the generators rotate at 50 Hz, in others at 60 Hz. If you live in Europe, the voltage at your home between phase and grounded neutral would be 220 volts. In America, it would be around 110 volts. In three phase systems, however, the voltage is defined phase to phase. The phase to phase voltage is square root of three times higher than phase to ground, as per the red dot on the screen. Please note that the red dot shows only the phase to phase voltage RS. You can see the examples below. The system voltage of a 230 volt low voltage system would be 400 volts and for a 120 volt as per US it would be 210 volts. Let's now go back to your home. The cable is connected to the house distribution cubicle where it first hits the electricity meter. Then it is connected to the five bus bars R, S, T, N and Earth. The sockets are then connected, starting with the earth wire, the neutral, and for most sockets, one phase only. Before leaving the cabinet, all the phase wires are connected to fuses. For devices with a higher power demand, special three phase sockets are connected to all the three phases. In case of a blackout, all your electric appliances would be dead. Even essential functions such as flushing toilets, water supply and heating would not work anymore. The cable at your home is connected to a terminal box together with cables for other houses. For every house connection there is a fuse. Here is an example of such a terminal box. In larger cities there are hundreds of terminal boxes. They are bundled and connected to secondary substations. Larger houses may be directly connected to the secondary substation. The secondary substation connects the low voltage distribution grid to the medium voltage distribution grid. Therefore there is a transformer, some low voltage fuses or breakers and a medium voltage load break switch or a linear voltage breaker. The secondary substation builds the bridge between the low voltage distribution on a couple of hundred volts up to the medium voltage distribution between 10 and 40 kilovolts. In US, a popular version of the secondary substation is the so-called pad mount transformer. The secondary substation is equipped with a control and protection relay and it can be connected to two medium voltage cable for redundancy purpose. So far we have seen the terminal box, the secondary substation connecting low voltage to medium voltage and now we are looking at the primary substation including configuration of the medium voltage distribution. The primary substation connects the medium voltage to the high voltage grid. To the left you see the simple one, a feeder arrangement. In rural areas this configuration can even be single phase. A failure along the line is cleared by the breaker in the primary substation. The feeder stays out of service until repair. Let's now see how a ring type configuration works. On top you see the primary substation with two breakers on the medium voltage side. Then the medium voltage ring with the load brake switch at the bottom staying open. Here you see all the switches you can have in such an arrangement. Let's close the breaker, the load brake switches and insert the fuses. The switch at the bottom stays open, thus we have two parallel feeders which can be connected. 
let's initiate the fault in one of the cable segments, could be a hungry rat. Immediately the breaker clears the fault. The load brake switches isolate the fault. The load brake switch reconnects up to the isolated segment. And the breaker reconnects the other part of the last feeder. The customers will have noticed the short flicker only. And now the service team can repair the cable without disconnecting loads. So far we have seen the low voltage and medium voltage distribution up to the primary substation which connects to the local high voltage grid. This grid is often referred to as subtransmission. Large substations with step down transformers connect to the interregional and cross country transmission grid which can be operated at very high voltages. High voltages are needed to enable power transmission over longer distances at low losses. Large generation plants often connect directly to the transmission system by means of step-up transformers. Here you get the schematic overview of what could be a power system in a specific country or in a large region. The system frequency control guarantees that power generation always meets the demand at every moment in time. On the link below you can access a sophisticated simulator where you can build your own power system models and test it. In this example you can see the impact of a variable load on the frequency and how you can adapt the generation to the load. This is an example of how the European power system looks like. Learning by doing is my mantra, go to the link below in order to access the simulator.